Here at Progressive Field, we're joined now by Indians team president Chris Antonetti. And obviously, this is a lot better than yesterday, even though the temperature may not make it feel that much better. But look, yesterday was a tough situation for a lot of people involved when it came down to the decision to postpone the game. Right as fans were all clogged up at the gates, ready to file in. Tell us what went into it and how it all came about. Yeah, it was a really difficult decision. I think first and foremost, you know, we had in our minds that, you know, we were going to play. You know, we that was our mindset over the weekend. That was our mindset yesterday morning. Uh, we recognize that a lot of fans have made plans to come down to the ballpark, a lot of whom came in from out of town or took time off work or kids out of school. So we had every intention of playing. Uh, unfortunately, as the day progressed, the conditions continued to worsen. Instead of it just being cold, it ended up being colder than we thought windier than expected and then really what ended up being the deciding factor was once the precipitation stayed and continued to linger throughout the day which was different than the forecast over the weekend that's when we started to feel the conditions may start to become unsafe for our players and so the combination of factors of the cold the wind and the precipitation and the wetness and ice on the field got us to the point of making the difficult decision of saying you know what it's just it may not be the smart thing to do despite how much we all wanted to play and we didn't get there easily. You know, we spent a lot of time thinking about it. We um, you know, visited with the Red Sox, John Farrell, uh, Dave Nabrowski, Mike Hayes, and their front office were in town, uh, the umpires. And at the end of it, everyone kind of felt the right thing to do, the smart thing to do would be to, to, to postpone until today, uh, as difficult as that may be. And so, you know, we recognize how special opening day is, and we all wanted to play, but we just felt, that, again, the smart thing to do was just to wait a day, especially given the forecast for today called for no rain and uh, a little bit warmer and much better conditions for playing. It's really a no win situation no matter how you look at it because it, it's miserable. Nobody wanted to play. Look at this. Oh, just just oh. below us. Almost oh, had my first play. Yeah, here. you weren't going <laughs> yeah. for it. You would have. It's amazing when it's nowhere close, Matt. Right. Pretend he for was. When it's in the booth, he's <laughs> exactly. under the table. Exactly. Yeah. He's diving. For I was right there. I was <laughs> ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's a situation. Hey, April baseball, whether it's Cleveland, Chicago, you can go anywhere. It's just it's it's a tough call. And I know when you have a sold out house, everybody wants to play the game. We were desperate to play, dying to play. Yes, I know. It. Just unfortunately, the way things progress, we, we just felt it wasn't the, the smart thing to do. And so now what we'll try to do is, you know, we recognize that a lot of people are out here today and could take advantage of uh, the postponement for today. But we also recognize there's a large group of our fans that wouldn't be able to come back today. So. What we've tried to do is find ways to, you know, we can never replace opening day. It's right. such a special day and so many plans of fan or so many fans have planned for it. But what we'd like to try to do is help make them whole in some other way. So we've offered two uh, tickets to any two games, not just one game, but any two, any two games in April and May. And hopefully fans can come back out and enjoy another game here. Well, that's that's good planning. I like that. And hopefully they do too. And you know tomorrow the you know this series continues tomorrow and Thursday and the forecast doesn't look much better. I know I'm trying to enjoy the sun uh, and well <laughs> and, and today but yeah tomorrow Thursday and actually when we go into Chicago right. this weekend in Chicago we're facing the same thing. Yeah so. why don't we just jump on a plane go back to Arizona <laughs> and play there for a few games. We, we joked week. about that just play our season in our first uh, month of the season in Goodyear. Back to back strikeouts for David Price who doesn't seem to have any trouble today but going back to what we were talking about. Price said yesterday that when he was out just going out and throwing a baseball around Warren, he couldn't feel his fingers. Yep. So I mean, when you get feedback like that from players, that has to factor into the decision as well, I would think. It definitely does. Uh, you know, we got feedback like that from their players, from our players that went out just to try to play catch yesterday for five or ten minutes and the combination of again the wind, the cold, and then the wetness and dampness made it really, really difficult. And we felt it could put the players in danger. If you can't feel your hands, it's difficult to know where a 95 mile an hour fastball man. Well, and then the fans would have been stuck to their seats. You would have had to get them all out of their seats by the end of the game. That would have been tough. Only Rick could come up with that. Uh, we need the icer for the fans. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> we didn't think about that part of it. So. Well, David Price is locked in here at the start with six strikeouts. Jason Kipnis with a bouncer to second. The drive goes one, two, three. Chris, thanks for stopping by. Tough, tough day yesterday, but uh, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. My pleasure, guys. Thank you very much for the time.